All right, all you vampires out there, this is Jyrki69 from Helsinki, Finland, and you know me from the bands, the 69 Eyes and also the 69 Cats, and you're listening to Rock at Night. Welcome, Yerky69, to Rocket Night Magazine slash podcast. Uh, Thank look, you, ma'am. Looking at your resume, my goodness, you're probably the most eclectic rock musician I've ever spoken to. You, you're involved in UNICEF as a Goodwill Ambassador, uh, which means I presume you're really into social justice and causes. Uh, you draw and uh, write comic books. You've got Zombie Love. You've written a cookbook, I understand, about juicing. Uh, you have a master's degree in analytical chemistry. Of course, we all know you from the 69 eyes and now the 69 cats. When you look at yourself, what do you think of yourself firstly, uh, as a musician or as an artist or a scientist? Who, who is Yerky 69? Yeah, well, ma'am, that's a good question. And uh, um, uh, I've been around. That's why, you know, like, uh, that's, that's the reason. I mean, I'm, 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 uh, my life, how, how I see my life uh, and all of our lives, I hope that everybody has a chance to experience uh, their lives in the in the best possible positive way. I mean, there's it's it's great to be here, and I want to do a lot of things. And uh, th those things that you just mentioned are just a few of them that I've done by far. And I have a lot a lot of other things, you know, to come to come in the future. At least I hope so. And uh, you know, like there's a Elvis Presley song uh, called "Got a Lot of Living to Do," and uh, from a movie "Loving You." if you want to check it out. So that's sort of my motto, actually. I got a lot of living to do. And uh, I've been, I'm, I'm curious still by this age. I'm 52 now. I'm curious and, you know, from a lot of things in, in, this, in this world and in life. And, and, and uh, I just try to, uh, you know, try to everything that I haven't tried before. What do you think is driving you internally? And then, well, like you asked, like what I like to be, men what this question was actually something totally different, like what I think of, of these things first. So I think at, at this interview, of course, I represent myself as I'm, I'm, a, I'm a rocker. I'm, a, I'm singing a couple of bands and the 69 Eyes is the most known of and the, six, uh, and the 69 Cats is uh, my rockabilly band which is something that i have to do once a while once in seven years and uh now it's a time to you know let my steam out with the 69 cats again after seven years mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about the uh the rockabilly or shall we say psychobilly album that's coming out this or, or even or even gothabilly yeah uh seven year itch I guess you're an all time or an old time fan of Elvis Presley. And in a sense, your persona, you kind of, you kind of seem like Elvis Presley reincarnated, but in a goth sense. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> that's thank the you way very I, much. That's the way I see you. Uh, but yet yeah, also listening to some of the latest singles, uh, your voice almost has hints of Boris Karloff because I know you're really into horror and uh, Halloween. In a sense, are you going back to your your initial roots? Meaning, you as a child, you were an Elvis Presley fan. Um, how 
what do you think this evolution of Yerke 69, what's going on with this evolution? Um, it's, it's a typical thing uh, for boys uh, in my age, you know, like uh, as we grew up, there was a lot of interesting things going on in Marvel comics. And then there was the horror movies on TV. And uh, then actually even Elvis was alive for, for some time. And then, then came, uh, after, after a little while came punk rock. And then after punk rock came the 80s. And the 80s have a lot of things for us who like these things that I just mentioned. And uh, they, they, they started to be rock music, which had all these influences from, from comics and horror movies and so on. So um, I've just like, um, this bunch of other guys, a couple of other guys uh, like uh, in, in rock world who have similar kind of roots and, 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 and they, they feel like my... Um, homies if i may say so in, in that sense so it's just like uh i i um all together i think you know like uh, i i see things as uh, uh not only being in the band but with with these other things you mentioned uh it's sort of like uh I, that's my my way to communicate with this world and also like uh, i'm huge fan of uh popular culture and uh, I'm, I'm curious about it still. And obviously one of my like uh, biggest heroes uh, is, is Andy Warhol and how he approached things. So I'm sort of like uh, on the, I, 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 in, my, in my little mind, I think I'm in the, on the same path. I'm, I'm just like, a, I'm, I'm melting, I have my melting pot and I, I melt everything that I, I think is cool. And I, I put them together, and what what what's the result? Is 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 the music that I do sometimes uh, drawing things, sometimes writing something, and uh, hopefully, actually, I, I I can reveal this now. I'm also like a, in in the state of planning a movie, and which is obviously going to be a horror movie, and so um, I, I'm. I'm, I'm using these these tools and, and these things that I, I like and love and know the best. And I hope that I, that that brings people, uh, you know, good vibes, gives them good times, definitely have been giving me good times. And, uh, you know, it's just like, um, I don't, I've been given these interviews year after year. And obviously I'm, there's a little, some change in them. I hope there's some growth. As, as as me in, in in my persona, but also like uh, like like mentally and and a lot of a lot of things, seeing understanding other things uh, as as I grow up, of course. But uh, I I don't think that like I have I don't I, I'm kind of bored to explain all these things, and, and for me them are pretty obvious. And I'm pretty lucky that people there's a bunch of people who follow what I've been doing with through my bands. And they are not my bands, but the bands that I'm involved with. Uh, and and they, they seem to understand exactly what I'm trying to reach or trying to combine. And, and I'm lucky. And that's my way to communicate with them. And later on, probably like I, I meet a lot of people when I tour around the world. So sometimes uh, after the show uh, by the bar, we can talk about those things that they, they discovered because I, I sort of, especially in music i leave sort of like uh uh like you know something you can really find probably name of the movie names of the movies or something simple like that and or links to discover just i leave them openly on purpose and and there's and 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 you know like just it's all about the pop culture mm -hmm. it's all about that it's all about rock and roll movies comics you know american pop culture those of like uh French, French chic, and of course some uh, like cool Italian stuff, you know. Uh, and and you know, I come from Finland, so there's elements from from my culture there as well. But mostly, it's it's all about like a loud pop culture that I represent. Uh, two questions about the movie. I'm intrigued. Are you doing the music? Are you acting in it? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm actually, uh, I'm writing uh, the, the, a script oh. to a movie. Okay. 
Okay. And and uh, and that that I'll tell everything about more, but that's something which is new to me, okay. and I'm really excited about that. And and it's it's going to be the usual Euro 69 trip, you know. But it's about the time to do I that. Ha- I haven't seen it on Netflix. I'm it's on my list, but Heavy Trip from Finland. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> I've heard about I've heard about it, but I haven't I haven't seen it. It's uh I guess it's kind of a, a rock and roll metal zombie interesting. It's a comedy, but um I'm it's on my watch list. So that was kind of leading to another question I had about Finland. It's um interesting that you know back in the 80s you have Hanoi Rock, you have flamboyant bands like Leningrad Cowboys. You have a lot of kind of glam rock type bands coming out of Finland, yet at least from American point of views, we see Finland as being kind of, you know, icy and snowy and dark most of the time of the, you know, time of the year. It's, it doesn't seem, I mean, what attracts, what, why is it so, how do I say, how do these flamboyant bands come about yet in a somber kind of environment? Yeah, it's interesting that you you mentioned this. Uh, actually, I think sort of like uh, in that in in the musical sense, uh, Finland uh, could be actually, you know, like one of the one of the one of your states. You know, like in music, like musically, we're, we're closer. Our musical heritage is pretty close to could be close to closer to New York and uh, and California. In, in some sense than to, for instance, to English rock music or something like that, that we always absorbed American pop culture and uh, rock and roll has been always big thing here. And uh, uh, combining to other countries next to us, like Sweden, uh, they, you know, they are, they are pop, they are ABBA. And, and Finland has always been like more into, you know, like a rock and roll, like Metallica or, or, you know, like, uh, uh, ACDC kind of rock thing like we'd be more always like very serious about rock and roll and that's why we have you know like bands like that and of course we have like our own uh, like uh, we're at our own uh, uh, Finnish metal scene as well mm-hmm. you know so um, and that's still today I mean I've been explaining this already like 20 years but it still goes on <laughs> In mm-hmm. that sense, so um, like, uh, and we also know the roots of rock and roll, which is like, um, like during during our American tours, I I had the pleasure of visiting uh, like Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in in Cleveland a couple of times, and that's obviously a fantastic place for uh, uh, any rock fan. And I've been always surprised a little bit because you know they take um, they seem to take schools, that, you know, classic school classes there, and 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 kids or even older people are they they're sort of like uh, they don't know the roots of rock anymore. I, I can I can see that there. They think it's some things are funny when I when you know when I when there's like a booty booty guitar, I'm like wow that's great, and kids are laughing. Oh that's stupid that it's mm-hmm. you know like uh, square shaped or something like that, and. Uh, mm-hmm. So in Finland, we, we, we somehow, we really know the roots of rock and roll because uh, when I was growing up, uh, like a uh, 50s rock and roll was a really fashionable thing here. You know, obviously, like at the same time, you guys had uh, happy days on TV there. Uh, we have, a and, and I think it was like global, but 50s rock and roll was very popular in, in the, in the 70s. And, uh, late seventies and Finland, especially. So we know all, all the history of rock and roll uh, from, from, from Elvis to, to, you know, to Chuck Berry and Lil Richard and, and we really respect those guys. So from that point, like we have rock, your American rock roots here and they, they are, they, they've been uh, soon pretty deep. So when we start to play rock and roll, it, it, it has the roots and it doesn't come out of nowhere. So uh, I think you can hear it from different generation bands coming out from here that we, we know the roots, we respect the roots and we 
we are, you know, go following the roots as, as, as well. When it comes to this um, clammy thing, I think uh, one of the things is like, uh, uh, which is similar for <laughs> to Hanoi Rocks or him or, or the 69 Eyes, where we're just like, we're finished, we're, we're lean, tall and blue eyed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the for, for a starter, so, you know, that's just like how we are here, you know. I think it's interesting that you guys are really, you really have absorbed the 1950s, the nostalgic, the real, what we call the birth of rock, you know. Rock yeah, we, we, we know, know that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we know we know that. So it's like when when somebody starting making rock music here, they know where it where it came from. It came from the blues and jazz and from from those early days, from early, early 20th century days in, in, in America. So we sort of I think that that's something that you can hear from our band. So that's why, uh, you know, like uh, you, 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 they are what they are because of those, those roots are known. And, and I think, of course, now the years and decades are passing. I don't know what's, what waits for us, but I still, you know, like uh, think that uh, kids who play rock here these days, they, they still, you know, they, they love Chuck Berry and mm -hmm. all, all the 50s stuff and know what it means that you have to sort of understand that and then you start to do your own thing. So there's certain kind of like a, um, knowledge, which is, and, and uh, you have to understand certain kind of things. So when you, when you are, have been discovering bands from here. And so I think like what you just said in the question earlier, I think they is sort of, a, a, you know, they, they appear to you that they, they have something more common in, a, in American musical uh, background than, for instance, even like to, to British, though the British ones, all, of course, they know the rock roots as well. But I think they sort of like, a, they, they've been creating their own roots, you know, uh, and, and, and of course, Swede, Swedish, they are in, totally into pop. They're totally pop, pop orientated. So they, they are masters in creating catchy pop music. Finnish rockers or Finnish musicians are, are more into, uh, not into happy pop. We are more into, uh, because where we come from, we are, we are somewhere between East and West. So uh, we, we are into melancholic melodies, uh, darkness, uh, way more serious uh, approach than like our neighbors in Sweden. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't know what the hell else has been going on in Norway. That is, that is <laughs> uh, extreme approach. No, I like it, but it's 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 a uh, that's there. They are and they are there. You know their own breed as well. But it, I love it. But you know, like it's it's not. Ex I can't. I, I don't. I don't. They explain that themselves. I think it's well. It's a it's a Norse mythology. Of course, they they use that. Well. When you were growing up as a youth, let's say in elementary school, junior high, high school, did your parents play rock and roll music at home? No, no, we didn't even have a radio. And uh, the thing was like, uh, uh, I saw, I saw a movie when I was uh, uh, eight years old from TV, and and then there, it's a, it's a, it's a mo boxing movie, and the, the main character was a boxer, and then. Uh, all of a sudden, during the exciting moment of the movie, he started to sing, and I was like very surprised. Like, what? What is this? Like, why? Why this guy is singing all of a sudden? And then my mother uh, took a glimpse at, at the TV and said, "Like, oh, that's Elvis Presley. He's a rock star from America." Mm -hmm. And the movie was uh, Keith Galahad, mm -hmm. and uh, it took about a month or even or even less than then. Next time, uh, I saw a funeral on TV. And it was the same guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a funeral of Elvis. So like 19 August, 1977. Yeah. And uh, I was eight years old and I got interested in this guy because there's a lot of people around like on the streets 
during his funeral. And that was in, on the news here. And uh, I got in- interested in this guy. Who, who is this guy? And he, he, he looked really cool in general. And, and that was interesting. And at, the same, at, the, at that moment, they they published all over the world, of course, like uh, like uh, Elvis Presley uh, tribute, like magazines and and things like this. And I got a couple of them, and then I started to uh, buy music. and And one of those tribute magazines, there was a address to uh, Elvis Presley fan club in the UK, and uh, I joined Elvis Presley fan club in the UK when I was like eight years old. I got the membership card and uh, like a couple of like a couple of times a year came came this Elvis uh, magazine in English and uh, everything started from there and uh, of course like in the at some point in the 80s in, when, when I was a teenager I have some some other things and some other interests uh, musical instru- interests in my mind but obviously like over the years it always returns back to Elvis in that sense like because he he was uh, he was a pioneer and what he uh, created, and all the all these kind of interesting things, uh, and all the all the all, ever, whatever is involved with with his career, it's always interesting and mythical and mysterious, even so. Always, always Elvis. I mean, that's always inspiring, and uh, uh, there's a lot of things to you know uh, still to discover what what from him to at least for me. Well, it's it's obvious when you look at your music, his influence is there. I mean, you're like the goth. I, I think so too. I think so too. Thank you. But I'm I, I I was I haven't been talking about it like for a really long time. I mean, obviously, once in a while, people start to ask, and I've I've done it like on purpose. Like I've left some, uh, I've been flirting with it, but it it's it wasn't like uh, obvious like during these thirty years. But now I think. Like if you look at the big picture of of the sixty nine eyes and what I've been doing, yeah. there there is and if, uh, especially everything started uh, with the sixty nine cats from that idea because I wanted to sing original like sounding rock and roll and uh, then um, I I the story goes like actually like this that I um, I I went to for my personal pilgrimage. Uh, to Graceland, Memphis, uh, some some ten years ago, and then I uh, I was I was there a few days, and uh, I I was obviously going out every night, like by myself, uh, on Beale Street, uh, which has these fantastic little bars where you can listen to authentic blues artists playing very late in the night and that was that was fantastic and that uh, i was sitting on the rooftop uh on, on at some bar uh, on the daytime and uh i was having one i i have i want to tell this because it's it's very precise i i was having one uh i think uh well i mean it's not funny but i think i had a corona <laughs> one corona in my hand and it was sunny and i was sitting on the rooftop bar and I, I was really excited and thrilled to be there. I, I've been at the Sun Studios and and also like at Graceland. And I texted uh, to um, to the record boss of Cleopatra Records, like, "Hey, I'm I'm here in Memphis. What about like like I I, I would like to do some rockabilly. Do you, what should I do?" And uh, he immediately answered me and and and. Uh, sent me Danny B. Harvey's contact information. And here's the guy, contact this guy and see what, what it brings. And I contacted later on Danny B. Harvey. Uh, he lives in Austin, Texas. And uh, what, back then I was already in Finland and uh, we started to change ideas and, and we did a rough demo. And then it turned out to be like, hey, it, it, it sounded very good. So we did an EP first with uh, and and entitled the band as as the sixty nine cats because Danny B Harvey had had multiple bands which always were called cats. He he was with Slim Jim Phantom. He was in a band called Swinging Cats. Mm-hmm. Uh, he recorded stuff w- with that project. Also, he had a band with Lemmy 
from Motorhead and Slim Jim Phantom from Stray Cats and, and Danny on guitar. And uh, that was called Head Cat. And, and back in the 80s, he played in this uh, like uh, all American neon rockabilly band, uh, Rock Cats. So, and I was in the band called the 69 Eyes. So, which is, you know, put those two ni- names together and it was the 69 Cats. Was, that was, I thought it was funny. And uh, we did an EP first, and there's an Elvis cover actually on it because I thought I, I'd like to sing some Elvis songs. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that was Flaming Star. And then later on, we, we got a, a, a Clem Burke from Blondie on drums and, and Chopper Franklin uh, from The Cramps and currently on, on um, uh, he's, he's playing in um, Heath and Apostles. So uh, we got the, those guys for the first album and we played some shows with them. And uh, uh, the first album was called Transylvania Tapes. And that also has an Elvis cover called... Um, uh, Hold on, what what is it called? Um, if you can cut this memory block out, it would be I nice. Know. But if you, if you can't, it doesn't matter. But it just it has a uh, uh, the first album has an Elvis cover. I just can't get it to my head right now. Yeah, I can't either. I do. I'll tell you what song I really like from Transylvania Tapes is "Runaway" Del Shannon. Thank you. Uh, it's it's like number eight or reality something i can't remember yeah so yeah. we also have an elvis cover also on the on the uh, transylvania tapes so that elvis brought us together and uh um that was sort of my dream come true and i got the i, I always wanted to make roots music in that sense and i got the best possible musicians and danny b harvey is like a rockabilly guitar legend and that was that was amazing and and it was something that i i really uh also uh needed a change we've been doing the 69 eyes for very long time couple of over a couple of decades the third decade was starting and i just wanted to do something different for a change and also we toured uh with the 69 cats uh, like in, in, in the Central Europe, and, and then we played shows across the states, uh, like in Nashville and New Orleans, and of course in, in, uh, in, in, in LA. So, you know, and Austin, of course. So, you know, that was something that I needed to do just, you know, for a change. And then all of a sudden, you know, like uh, all of us got busy doing something else, and, and you know, like, uh, yeah, now it's 2021. You know what I find interesting, almost that you were in Memphis and in Elvis territory, and it's almost like the ghost of Elvis was speaking to you and telling Yeah, you. Ghost, ghost of Elvis was <laughs> yes. definitely taking taking me after that Corona uh, bottle I had. Yeah. Uh, like, like, but but it's seriously, it's, it's this that I was seeking. I, I like to tell it because I can... I can show the exact exact spot where I was sitting on the rooftop terrace and looking for Beale Street that I had this one beer. And I was, that was my, I was, you know, like my happiest moment in my life nearly by then. And then I was just texting to the, one of my best friends and asking like, hold on, I'm here. And and I just came from the sound studios. I'd like to do this kind of music for a change. Can you advise? What should I do? And, you know, like, uh, from Cleopatra Ray, they answered immediately and I got Danny B. Harvey's information and you know like that that started like that from you know from the right reasons. Yes. Like what what I always I use these words pretty often in, in, in interviews when when I'm asked about making music and making records and so on. So there's a there's there's no I mean everybody's expressing themselves like through their art and when it comes to rock and roll and this kind of way that I'm doing, I always try to explain that I'm, I would, I try to do from right reasons because I want to, I feel urge to express myself through the music or, and this, this was like, I had an urge to, um, to rock and roll 
rockabilly, you know, and, uh, and, and I, I, and that, that came from the heart mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it's, it's not like, obviously I'm not that, uh, obvious. It's obvious because I'm, I'm not that, um, uh, succeeded guy. So like everything has come from the heart and I like to keep it that way. I mean, I'm, I rather, I'm the guy who rather keeps things, uh, you know, underground as, as much as, you know, I can. And I, I never, like, we have different opinions in the 69 eyes, of course, but I, I never, for instance, I always thought our band to be the, the band which plays at the clubs, you know, like, uh, in a small venue at small venues and and that's how i i, I like that i i never uh, i wasn't even you know never dreaming big i never you know i i rather keep things simple and small and you know close to the you know close close to the original roots so you know like this is something like with the 69 cats, that's also something which was like fantastic when we uh, played these shows, uh, like, uh, like uh, when we toured last time, like uh, the, the locations and the venues were fantastic. They were, they were like, like playing at the Viper room in Hollywood. That is absolutely one of my favorite venues ever. And uh, you know, uh, that, that's, those kind of things. I we had a chance with the sixty nine cats to play like venues which which were something, you know, which were like fantastic, mm -hmm. you know, to do and, and to to do that with with of course like uh, uh with, with that kind of music that 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 where that's really uh, something where they fit best. Yeah, well, it seems like the 69 with the 69 eyes, you can't really do rockabilly because the fans expect a certain sound. They're looking for a certain sound. And this gave you the opportunity to explore the other facets of your personality. And it sounds like you had an epiphany when you were in Memphis and everything was aligned and everything came together. And now you did it. And I absolutely love everything that I've heard from the 69 cats. I love rockabilly anyway. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. And that's that's just like how the things go sometimes. And uh, also like through, uh, through these years, uh, we had the first 69 cats album out like in, uh, in 2014. And, uh, uh, and we played those shows and, you know, life, go life, you know, uh, you know, life goes on and and then we were everywhere i've gone with the 69 eyes ever since there's always people with the 69 cats records as well which is obviously really nice that uh like the 69 eyes fans are interested in in that side of me as well and also have discovered hopefully even new 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 kind of music and uh so people have been asking like, are you going to do a new record? And they brought the, brought the album, the vinyl or, or CDs to the shows to get signed. And uh, they've been asking like, if there's another record coming out. And obviously when we toured, uh, you know, that, that happened sometimes, even though these, these days things happen uh, kind of fast. So people are kind of slow to react things like what I heard from Danny B. Harvey when, when they had a uh, head cat uh, with, with Lemmy from Motorhead and Slim Jim Phantom from Stray Cats. Uh, it took 10 years to people to come to the shows and understand that there's a rock and roll rockabilly band by Lemmy. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, like uh, last tour head cat, cat did, that was like huge success. And then they, um, they, people finally discovered that it, and that took 10 years now it's nearly 10 years uh with the 69 cats but people really started to discover the band only like quite recently and now after seven years we just thought that maybe it's time to do some new music and then there was something uh we toured with the 69 eyes uh in the in the states a couple of years ago and then big harvey 
when we played in Austin, Danny B. Harvey came as a guest on stage. And then we just got the idea, like, what the hell? Why don't we do another 69 Cats album? Maybe it's time for that. And since it was close to seven years uh, by then, we it seemed like when if we do the record, then it comes out after seven years. Uh, the first record, uh, Danny got this uh, kind of joke that uh, it's like in Bible, uh, like in the Old Testament, where, where it's told that every seven years, the locust come, you know, alive from the from underground. And that's actually how it happens in the Africa, really. Like locusts are like uh, every seven years they come. So, so that was kind of like a kind of, interesting uh biblical uh reference as well and uh now we've done the record and uh it, it's exciting to see like uh the, the reaction people are seem to be extremely excited about that but we are back together and uh having new music out and uh now we have obviously a little bit different band than, than the beginning but still uh and now we have all the other new thing is like the first album was just cover songs because uh you know it's just like it didn't feel like uh, worth writing new material i just wanted to sing so I, I i didn't mind to have like covers there kind of obscure some of them or, or just like kind of super fun to do like on the first album there's the rocky horror picture show uh sweet transvestite the song that was like uh mm-hmm. Well, that was really cool to do uh, on the record, and so um, yeah. So now we have new new songs, even original songs, original Six Nine Cats songs. So and and the record is it's it's a. Uh, I hope it brings happiness for people and good times, and at at some point when it's possible, people can dance to it, and then someday, a little bit later on, we we will tour and play the songs in front of people. Well, I guess locusts didn't come, but a pandemic came. So I yeah, pres- yeah, that's <laughs> it's kind of like a. I, I mean, if you if you remember the 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 la- latest sixty nine eyes album was called West End, and I gave interviews like endlessly, like what do I what do I mean with that? Is the Western civilization going to end or something like that? Mm-hmm. And then. Then after that, the pandemic comes. So it's kind of like uh, <laughs> that. That was that was that was weird. That at least that was kind of strange. Well, was this written in 2020 uh, by you guys? I presume remotely. You just sent ideas. To oh you. well, actually, actually, you wrote. We wrote the songs in 2019, and early in January 2020. In the old times, I went to Austin and recorded my vocals. And Danny finished the record with the rest of the guys uh, actually uh, remotely uh, during the spring of 2020. Okay, yeah, because I saw you were on tour here in winter last year. Yes, yes, we were. And, and, and I, so I had, I had finished... A record by then I, I was in Austin in early January and, and we finished the songs then and, and then you know like I think uh, uh, the bass tracks by Kim Fro- Kim Necroman from Necromantics and Trumps by legendary Red Skates from The Damned they, they were finished uh, around the same time and Danny mixed the whole album during the springtime Excellent. Well, thank you so much. And I will see you. in. Thank you, ma'am. Bye bye. All right. Have a nice night. Bye. Bye. You're listening to Rock at Night. The introductory song, Get On Down, is from blues artist Billy, Billy Bass Alford. Look for his music at ReverbNation.com.